So hello everyone, welcome to our new video. And today we are going to see how to write a program to implement a stack in an array using the first element of the stack as a top element. Or you can consider this as the reverse implementation of stack using arrays. So till now we have learned how we can implement stack in an array, the normal implementation. But today we are going to learn about the reverse implementation. So, so students, I guess you all have a clear idea about the stack implementation. I think you have a clear idea about the implementation of stack using arrays. If you don't know how to implement it first, it will be better that you learn about that. I will just share the link. You can watch it there. And now let's suppose we have this array and we have to do the reverse implementation. Whenever we had, uh, whenever we had to actually implement, not the reverse, uh, the, the regular implementation. So basically we had a top variable, which was storing the index of the topmost element. So let's suppose here, right now this is empty. So it is minus one, the top variable for a regular implementation. If I have to store values, so at first I, let's suppose if I want to store here a seven, then the next number, let's say 11, I want to store, then the top gets incremented before storing any number, the top gets incremented every time before it was minus one, it incremented to zero. And then I stored here a seven. Again, it will be incremented to one and I will store here as let's say 11. Now, this is the regular implementation in the reverse implementation. In the reverse implementation, what we are going to have here is the top element will remain fixed here. The top will be fixed here. We don't have to make any changes for the top. It is going to be fixed. We just have to keep track of the first element every time. So as top is going here to be fixed, so we don't need any top variable here. We don't need this top variable. We will have another variable as first which will be storing the index of the first element. Now let's suppose if I want to store any element by default, it will be also be the same uh, similar to top. This first variable will be always equal to minus one by default when the array is empty. Now here, suppose if I want to store the number seven. So at first, this first variable will be incremented and it will be storing here the number seven. After storing the number seven, suppose if I want to add another value, let's say 13. Now here I'm not going to store 13 here. What I have to do first thing is I have to shift. I have to shift seven towards the right. So as I shift here, so seven comes here and then I have to change this seven to 13 here. So now here 13 will be stored here. Now, suppose if I want to add another number here, let's say as uh, 19. So this time, first we have to shift seven here. So seven gets stored here. Similarly, we have to store 13 here and then 19 is going to be stored here at the first index here. So this is how it is going to store the values every time every number will be shifted towards the left. And whenever we have to shift any number, that number has to be now suppose if we have to pop out any value, the first element here, this 19 will be popped out and every number will be shifted towards the left. And whenever we are shifting all the numbers, the first will every time it will be incrementing by one. And whenever we are popping out anything, this first variable will be decrementing here by minus one. Suppose if I want to pop out this value. So here I have here is 19. If I have to pop out, then the first thing is I have to, I have to start from the first index and keep on shifting each and every number towards the left. So first I will have here as 13. Second element I will have here as seven. This will be the new stack here. Okay. Now as I have 13 and seven, still I have seven here. So it is not going to matter because 
actually we cannot delete any value from an array so just what we are going to do we have to decrement the first variable by minus one every time so now let's go to the program and see the implementation right now so here i have kept everything as the same as the as the regular implementation we have a stack array the size as max equal to seven and here instead of the top variable we have here is minus one here we have the same functions push is full is empty print pop and peak so here inside the main i have taken two variables data and choice you will come to know further while i am explaining you the program now here we have i have taken a while loop which is an infinite while loop here and inside this i am giving instructions to the user which operation does the user wants to do push pop print the top element or print all the elements of the stack else the user wants to quit now whatever the user gives the input i am going to take it in the choice variable and after that we are going to perform the operations depending upon the choice that the user gives one for pushing any element two for popping out any element three for returning the topmost element and four for printing everything and any other values will terminate the program so here let's first look at the push function so first i have to ask the user the element that has to be pushed then i will take it in the data variable and i will call the push function by passing the data value here let's go to the push function here this is our push function now as you know if the stack is already full we cannot enter any new element so here i have the is full function and if it is full then it is going to print there as tag overflow and it will be coming out of the program it will terminate the program else every time this first variable it will be incremented by one and if once it is incremented by one as i said all the numbers it is going to be shifted towards the right so here whatever be the first variable whatever be the value for the first one wherever it is the first maybe second index third index fourth index fifth index wherever it is it will be starting from the right hand side and after starting from the right hand side every time it will be shifting each and every number towards the right till the value for i is greater than 0 it means till the first index okay every time stack arr of i is equal to stack arr of i minus 1 in the new index in the greater index this the value from the smaller index will be updated and at the first index which will be here as the top now stack arr of 0 this is the top that we have here now there the data value will be stored now let's look at the is full and is empty function now here before we had the condition that the top variable it will be storing the highest it will be storing the topmost value but here we have first now first will be the same as the top here representing the first element okay the top was representing the last one here it will be representing the first one or the bottom or the bottom most element if the value for first if it is one less than the max the first index the max value is 7 so here we know the last index that we are going to have here is 6 so if it is equal to 6 here so it is going to return 1 which means true else it is going to return as 0 similarly for is empty function first is going to be minus 1 so if it is actually equal to minus 1 then it is going to return 1 else it is going to return 0 So now you have seen about the push function. Now let's go to the other operations. Here we have the pop function. So if I, if we go to the pop function, first it is very important to check if we have any element or not. If we don't have any element, how can we pop out any value from there? So here, if it is empty, it is going to give the instruction to the user as stack underflow. We don't have any element, and it will. come out of the program else whatever is the first element it is going to be stored in the value variable after storing it in the value variable now all the elements in the stack it has to be shifted 
towards the left. So here in time equal to zero, it will start from the first index and it will go till the, the index, which is just before the first index. And it will keep on storing the number on the right towards the left. And after performing this operation, this first, this first index, it is going to decrement by one. And whatever the value is getting popped out, this will be returned from here. If it is returning that value, we are going to have it in this data variable. And we are going to give the instruction to the user that the deleted element is percent D or that is data. Now let's look at the pick function. If the user gives the choice as three, so the top element is percent D. Percent D refers here to the pick function, whatever the pick function returns here. So here in this pick function, it is if it is empty, then it is tech underflow. Else, it is simply going to return the first element stack ARR of zero. And it will be returned from here. Then at last we have the print function. If the user gives the input as four, so here we have print. Here again, we need to check if the stack is empty. If it is empty, then it is going to display as stack underflow. Else it will come out and sorry, it will not enter inside and it will be here and it will print all the elements from top to bottom. If you remember in the actual implementation, we were starting here from top and we were going till i greater than equal to zero. But here as it is a reverse one. So here we will be starting from zero and it will go till the first index and each and every element it will be printing here as tag arr of i. That's it. Now this is all about the reverse implementation. So now let's execute the program and see how it works. So here I have some instructions, push, pop, print the top element or print all the elements. I know that we don't have any elements. So first I'm going to push element. That's a seven. Then another element I will push here, let's say 19. Another element here is 25. Now if I want to check all the elements, so here I have all the elements. The topmost element I have here is 25, then 19, and the, the and at the bottom I have seven here. If I pop out any element, so here it is going to give me the result as the deleted element is 25. So if I print it again here, so here right now I have only 19 and 17. If I need the topmost elements, I will give the choice here as three. This will be returning to me as here as 19. So this is how it is going to work. So this is all for today. So I'm sure that you all might be thinking that why do we need to learn about the reverse implementation? Now, this reverse implementation, this type of questions are actually asked in the interview so that the interviewer can judge that are you even clear with all the concepts of stack? If you are asked to do so, can Will you be able to do or not? And there is one more very important reason why it is necessary to learn the reverse implementation. Now, to know about what is the real reason about this reverse implementation, you have to watch our next video. So stay tuned. Please don't forget to press the like button because we get a motivation every time you like our all our videos and Please subscribe to our channel if you have not subscribed yet and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you don't miss any updates or any notification whenever we upload a new video. And if you have any doubts, please give us a comment in the comment section. We will definitely get back to you and keep learning. Thank you very much.